Alright, so here's a lengthy, multi-parted problem that's not quite as horrific as it looks. We're given some information about a bar moving up and down that's generating a wave, a transverse sinusoidal wave to be exact, through a string. And the first thing we want to do is find the maximum value of the transverse speed, the speed at which the wave propagates. So let's begin by noting that our answer is going to be based on the standard formula for the transversal position of a wave, which is y sub m, or the amplitude of the wave, times the sine of kx minus omega t, where k is the wave number, x is the horizontal position on the string we're looking at, uh, omega is the angular frequency of the wave itself, and t is the point in time we're analyzing. Since part A is asking about the speed, and since speed is position with respect to time, let's take the derivative of this function with respect to the variable t. So I'll write u for speed and set that equal to the partial derivative of y with respect to t. And using some pretty basic calculus, just with chain, with just with chain rule stuff, we find that this is equal to a new function of negative omega times y sub m, times the cosine of the stuff that was in there before, kx minus omega t. Now the problem is asking us for the maximum value of speed, and right now we've got a, a negative at the beginning here. And when we have, like, since everything in regards to the phase of the wave itself is based on this cosine function, and because the sinusoidal functions on their own can't be greater than 1, we don't really need to do any like optimization or anything, since we already know that whatever the maximum value of this function is going to be, it's going to occur at the point when this cosine function on its own is equal to negative 1. And I say negative 1 instead of positive 1, because we need that other negative there to cancel out this negative sign here. So the maximum value of speed, or the maximum function or equation for speed, is going to be negative omega times y sub m times negative 1, which is what the cosine can become at the value where the function is the highest. But that can be more simply written as omega times y sub m. Now the problem doesn't give us the angular frequency of the wave, but it does give us the standard frequency of the wave, which is all we need because oh, angular frequency is just equal to 2 pi times the standard frequency. So that's what our function can become with variables that we already have. So now we can find the answer to part A by putting this into our calculator. Where f, for f we're going to use 120 hertz, since the problem says that the motion occurs at 120 cycles per second. And for y sub m, for the amplitude, well, the problem tells us that the bar moves up and down through a total distance of 1 centimeter. The amplitude refer should be half of that, since the amplitude is the farthest distance that the bar moves away from the, the central point about which the bar moves around. So y sub m should be half a centimeter, which I'm actually going to write as 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 2, since we want to convert that into meters in order for our uh, units to be in SI units. So if done properly, you should end up with a maximum speed of about 3.77 meters per second. Part B, which asks us about the maximum value of the transverse component of the tension, that part's a little trickier, because we don't have any simple formulas for the transverse component, which just refers to the, the y direction, really. What we can do is take a, a simplified diagram of a transverse wave and try to analyze what the transverse component will be in terms of angles. For example, let's say that this is a, well, a crude sketch of what a transverse wave might look like, with one specific part of it um, enlarged, one part of it that might have where the maximum component of the transverse will be. And that's why I box it in to show that I've enlarged this part. And well, at any point in this wave, there's going to be an x component and a y component based on like, whatever angle we're looking at. And let's call that angle theta. So if we imagine that we're just looking at any angle here, whether it's infinitely small or just a more general one, we can kind of look at this as a triangle, where this hypotenuse-like side here refers to the, the total tension within the string, whereas this is some change in the y position of the string, and this is a, a change in the x. 
Now the y direction is also going to be where the, the transverse component comes into play, because in a transverse wave, the transverse component refers specifically to the vertical direction, the direction opposite, or the direction perpendicular to the direction that the wave is actually propagating in. So an easy way to get a formula for the transverse component of the wave is to write it in terms of sine, where the transverse component of the wave is going to be equal to the y component of the total tension, which can just be written as the total tension times the sine of theta. Now this formula on its own still doesn't really help us yet, but what we can do is consider the fact that if we're looking at small angles, then at small angles, the sine of theta is, can be approximated as being roughly equal to the tangent of theta, like this. Now the reason why this is helpful is because if we use the, the definition of tangent angles in regards to triangles, then the tangent of theta can also be written as dy over dx. This means that we can bring a partial derivative of the original wave function into it again, which will help us find the maximum value because then we can connect it back into the sine or cosine functions. I also want to note that we should make these terms negative because now that we're bringing the dx into it, that's important because, well, the tension of the wave is pointing in the opposite direction that the wave is propagating in. Like if we have the, the bar that's moving up and down on the left, that's where the tension's coming from but that's sending the wave towards the right. So because there are opposites there, there should be a negative sign on the outside here. So we're going to take the partial derivative of this function, but with respect to x rather than t. So we're not going to end up with the same formula that we ended up with when we took the derivative with respect to t to find the speed in part a. Instead, we should get it as k times y sub m, then times the same cosine function as before. Now we found the function, but we need to get the maximum. So we'll do the same thing we did in part A, where we will say, well, the ma well this function is going to be maximized when this, when the cosine function, has a magnitude of 1 and can also cancel out the negative sign here. So the maximum should take place when the cosine of kx minus omega t is equal to negative 1. So we'll apply that logic and say that the maximum value of this function should be at tau times k times y sub m. Now we have both tau and y sub m from the problem. I mean, we used y sub m in part a, that was the 0.5 times 10 to the negative 2, and tau is just given to us in the problem, since it says the tension is 90 newtons. We don't have k, we don't have the wave number, but we can use other formulas associated with waves to figure out what that might be from the other variables we have. One of the formulas we have for, the, for k, the angular wave number, is that it's equal to the angular frequency divided by the speed of the wave. Now that still doesn't totally help us since we don't have the speed of the wave's propagation, uh, but we do have another formula that says that the speed of the wave is equal to the square root of the tension within the string divided by the linear density of the string. So we can combine these together to replace that k term in this formula. So we've now created this kind of awkward looking formula right here, but it should get us the answer we want. We can just plug in 90 newtons for the taus, the same value we use in part a for y sub m, and 2 pi times 120 hertz for, the, for omega. The linear density of the string is given to us in the problem, but be sure to convert it so that it's from grams to kilograms. If done properly, you should end up with a maximum tension of about 12.4 newtons. All right, thankfully, the rest of the parts of the problem are a lot simpler and more straightforward than this. Part C first asks us to verify that the maximum values we found in part A and B occur at the same phase values for the wave. Well, in order to maximize both of those functions, the one for velocity and the one for the transverse component of the tension, we kind of assumed that the cosine function, of the, the, cos, uh, the sine function, would be the one to maximize the function by canceling out the negative sign and by having the largest possible magnitude. And in both cases, we did this by assuming that the cosine function in total would be equal to negative 1. 
This alone would verify that the maximum values have happen at the same phase, because in order for both of the functions, both of the cosine functions, to equal the same thing, the the phase of the function, which refers to the inside stuff here, must be equal to the same thing. Uh, more specifically, um, a cosine function is equal to negative one when the phase is equal to 180 degrees, or another way to say that would be pi radians. So you could write that for part C, that we know they're the same. We know they happen at the same phase value because the phase value in both cases is going to be 180 degrees. Uh, the other thing that part C asks for is what the transverse displacement of the string is at the phase. All right, so this is basically asking us back about the original function, which tells us what the y displacement will be, which uses a sine function instead of a cosine function. But even though the function's changed, the phase hasn't. And a sine value at 180 degrees is going to be, it's going to give us, the sine of 180 degrees is zero. So that's going to give us a y displacement of zero. So at that maximum point, the string is at the zero position in the y-axis. This is kind of intuitive, too, when you think about it, because if we look at the x-axis of a transverse string, it kind of makes sense, because in terms of the speed of the, of the transverse component, it's going up and down and up and down, and the speed is going to be at its smallest when it's at the peak or the trough, because that's when it's changing direction. It kind of makes sense that the speed would be the maximum at this central point, same with the transverse component of the tension as well, because the central point is when the, the string is most angled vertically, where at the peak and trough, they're just horizontal. Part D is asking us to find out what the maximum power is. That's what the rate of energy transfer is, or rate of work. And it's given to us by this formula here, the change in work, or the change in energy, divided by the change in time. Now, we, we don't exactly know much about either of these variables, but we can do some algebraic rewriting. For example, work is equal to the force of something multiplied by the distance that that force has traveled. In the case of a power within a transverse wave, we can use, we can replace W, we can replace the work, with the transverse component of the tension multiplied by the Y displacement of the string. So we can rewrite the equation as the transverse component of tau multiplied by the change in the y displacement divided by the change in t. Now notice that this part right here now looks very similar to the formula for the, the speed of the wave in the transverse direction. All right, so now we have a much more convenient formula that the power can be equal to, is equal to the transverse component of the tension times the speed of the wave in the y direction. And since the problem's asking us for the maximum value of the power, we can find the maximum value of the power easily enough by putting in the maximum values for T trans and U that we found in parts A and B. So we'll just put in our answers for parts A and B into this formula, and that gets us a maximum power of about 46.7 watts. Part E is fairly straightforward. Now we just want to know what the transverse displacement Y is when this maximum happens. But think about it, that maximum happens at the values we already found in part A and B, and as we established in part C, the y displacement for both of those values is just at zero. So nothing's changed here, and the answer to part A, E, is the same as the answer to part D, C. Damn it. Alright, moving on. Part F asks about the minimum power through the string. This is also an easy one, because we know that the tension and the speed both have points where they're zero. So at either of these points, if either of them are zero, then the power becomes zero. So the minimum va value for power is going to be zero as well. Now part G asks for what the y displacement is when the minimum power happens. Well, we already established that the maximum power happens when the sine function is equal to zero. So the opposite must happen when the sine function is equal to either 1 or negative 1, positive 1 or negative 1, which would make this function equal to either positive or negative y sub m. It could be either value. All we need to do now is put in the amplitude we've been putting in for the past few uh, times when the amplitude was necessary. So plus or minus 0.50 centimeters. 
And that's our answer for part G. And so we're all done with that problem. If you have any problems or confusions or questions, um, please post a comment down below and I'll try to help you out. I hope this video helped you out uh, for what it's worth, but I'm more than happy to answer any additional questions. And if you have other problems that you'd like for me to make videos on, or just more questions in general, I've got a Discord server that I've linked down below, as well as in the channel description, if you'd like to contact me. Have a nice day.